Hi there, welcome to Alpine Bravo. My name is Brendan and this is my channel dedicated to all things Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. In this video uh, is part three in a series of tutorials on how to fly the Dea Kodiak 100 uh, by Simwork Studio, one of the best GA aircraft in the simulator in my view. And in this video, we'll be taking a quick tour of the cockpit and just getting a familiarization of all the main features. So let's get into it. Well, here we are on the ground in Catalina Airport, uh, just off the coast of California. And we'll hop into the cockpit and just take a quick tour around. A couple of things before I start. I'll just uh, pop the electrics on, master battery, avionics bus and secondary bus just to get uh, all the screens up. Minimise the yoke just to help uh, see some of the lower panels. I'm not going to try and explain uh, the feature or function of every switch and knob. This is really just a quick familiarization of the aircraft uh, cockpit. So I'll just press that soft key there to bring up the MFD. And we'll let the G1000 carry on going through its initialization process. But I'll just zoom right out uh, so we can see the whole of the cockpit, uh, the main instrument panel. And starting at the left, we've got the ESI 500 standby flight instrument, a completely self-contained uh, backup flight instrument, uh, really nicely coded by SWS. Great feature, uh, will provide all the functions that you need in case of complete failure of the G1000 system. Uh, it can eat a bit of frame rates though, so if you find uh, you're struggling uh, with frames per second, perhaps flying over photogrammetry or something else that's having a, an impact performance, you can always click on fuse number three down here and that will just turn that device off and that will give you a quick, uh, a quick boost for your frames per second pop that back in. Then we can see we've obviously got the uh, three big screens here. Uh, these form the core of the G1000 NXI system. Uh, two flight displays, primary flight display here on the left, uh, MFD in the middle and then a PFD in the co-pilot position as well. In between uh, we have the uh, two radio control panels, they're identical, just a, a left and a right, um, but they're essentially mirroring one another. Then just down below that we have the GMA 700 autopilot panel. Just to the left of the autopilot panel, you'll see this guarded switch for the uh, terrain avoidance warning system and clicking that will inhibit the system, prevent it from operating. And that can be useful when flying go arounds or in certain uh, mountainous condition flying and you don't want the warning going off all the time. Another button just to notice here, uh, it's really part of the autopilot function, but it's a, a, le a wing leveler button. You press that, that will, if you've got the autopilot engaged, will command uh, the aircraft to fly straight and level. That can be quite good if everything's getting a bit overwhelming and you just need to bring the aircraft under some sort of control. Just coming back over to the left here, we have uh, the overspeed governor uh, test button. That's currently an operative. Uh, and then just beneath that, a Stall test button. As you can hear, press that, that will activate the uh, stall warning just to test the system. We then have the uh, a lower switch panel, as we've seen, we've got the master uh, battery, uh, master avionics bus, and the auxiliary avionics bus. 
Then we have a number of switches for the auxiliary fuel pump, uh, the igniters and starter, uh, three positions which starter for off high and low motor starts. Uh, the generator and the alternator switches to provide uh, electrical power to the aircraft once the engine's up and running. We then have the right hand switch panel which we see these the external aircraft lights, beacon, strobe, navigation and taxi lights, uh, landing lights which have a pulse function as well as a steady function. You might use the pulse for scaring birds, for example, or in just increasing in visibility of the aircraft in low lighting conditions, daylight lighting conditions, in perhaps a heavy traffic pattern. Uh, cabin lights then are the next three. Uh, normal will uh, just allow you to activate uh, some of the smaller lights, like this uh, small light here that uh, will illuminate the pedestal as well as the passenger reading lights. Whereas on will turn on the main cabin uh, floodlights for the whole cabin. It can be a bit bright though when flying at night, quite good for doing pre-flight pre -flight preparation. Um, I'll just change the time of day actually so we can see the effect of these changes more clearly. So these two dials here will turn on backlighting for the instrument panels. The right hand one is the G G1000 panels. Uh, uh, sorry, the left hand one. And then the right one will be the backlighting for the switch panels. Down below, uh, on the bottom row, sort of going from left to right, we have the, these two brown illuminated ones. Uh, the first one is inoperative, uh, but the second one's very important. That's to activate the inertial separator. Uh, we'll be talking more about that in later videos, uh, but that's a straight on off. It does take 40 seconds for the separator to engage and indicate on the PFD. Uh, pedo heats, two pedo heats left and right. Uh, then we have our anti-icing panel uh, switches. Uh, the surface de-icer, uh, so it's a de-ice rather than anti-ice, um, that will, two positions, max and off, and that uh, uses fluid, uh, de-icing fluid on the surfaces to uh, eliminate ice and prevent ice buildup. Windshield heater, simple on off. Backup pump uh, for the uh, de-icing system, and then the ice light here will illuminate um, the wings to help uh, you see if there's icing occurring uh, in nighttime conditions. Uh, then we have these uh, two uh, Hobbs meters. The first one shows total flight time in the Kodiak, and that's cumulative and persistent. Um, and then the lower one shows the block time for the current engine that you have in the aircraft. And as the engine in the Kodiak can uh, uh, be destroyed if uh, not followed through proper startup processes and just through age, eventually they do wear out. Uh, that's quite a, a useful number to keep track of. Oxygen panel. Uh, sorry, ELT switch. Uh, that's the emergency beacon. So up is on. Middle is just armed, and then at the bottom one's a test. And then we have our oxygen, crew oxygen, which you'd engage above uh, altitudes of, say, 12,000 feet. Uh, it will deplete over time, uh, but it's a good reservoir, and you won't see it deplete very quickly. Just to notice this red light here, that will illuminate if the uh, fuel selectors uh, in the overhead panel have not been turned on. And I will just move up here and we can see we have a left and right fuel selector. Highlight that, rotate the mouse wheel. And now we come down, we can see that that red light has gone. Um, the fuel selectors control the flow of 
fuel from the wing tanks, left and right wing tanks, and you would have them closed to prevent the fuel draining from one side to the other if you were parked on a slope. Uh, but you always want to make sure that they are open. Just staying on the overhead panel, we have the inertial reel lever lock. You just apply that before takeoff to lock your harness in. And then we have the sun visor, which is very handy. Um, and just highlight that and rotate your mouse wheel. And it has three positions to the side here, in front of the windscreen, and then stowed. Coming back down, just highlight the pedestal. So at the top of the pedal steer, here we have the aileron trim switches, and then the firewall fuel cutoff valve. Uh, that's just an emergency valve to prevent any fuel coming to reach the engine in case of an engine fire or a potential crash situation. You push that, but uh, sorry, make sure it's open. But you push it down to. Uh, open it uh, when you are in all normal operations. We have a trim wheel uh, for the elevator here. The white bar shows when it is center. Uh, in the real aircraft, there would be a trim indicator on the G1000 here, but uh, I understand there are limitations, which mean that that hasn't been possible to program that yet. We then have a throttle quadrant. Uh, we have the first, starting from left to right, we have the emergency power lever. Um, now that is an entirely independent throttle uh, to be used in case of a failure of the master control unit providing fuel to the engine. Um, basically the computerized con uh, fuel control system, which may render the normal uh, pro uh, throttle uh, inoperative. In that case, you would then switch over to using your emergency power lever. Just shifting our view slightly, get a better, better view. We also then have our propeller RPM lever, which basically goes from all the way maximum here. That will give you 2,200 uh, RPM in flight down to a minimum, which will be somewhat below 2000 RPM and then you can drop it down below the gate to feather the prop which you would always start up and start the aircraft up and shut it down with the prop feathered. Next we have the uh, condition lever uh, which has three positions cut off, low idle and high idle. Cut off is uh, will cut off all. This basically controls fuel flow to the engine. Cut off will prevent any fuel flowing. Low idle will uh, set a limit on the amount of fuel and therefore the performance of the engine and is typically used for ground handling. And then high idle is for all other operations in flight. We then have our flap lever with four positions off 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and 30 degrees with the uh, flap maximum extension speeds indicated for each setting. Just moving down then, we have the rudder trim down here. Uh, that's quite an important switch in the Kodiak, and it's a good one to bind to an external set of buttons or controller if you have one. We can just pop the armrest up out of the way and then that allows us then to see all the fuses and the fuses are clearly labelled and as you can see I can highlight them and most of them are operative. The ones that are greyed out here are inoperative but everything else, if you pull that, it will disable the system as we saw with the standby flight, uh, flight display. And yeah, let's see if we can find... Uh, a good one to pull. Uh, da, 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 da. We're just looking to see if we can get the MFD. There's the MFD there. Okay, so I've pulled the MFD. As you can see, the screen's gone blank. And the primary flight display has gone into revisionary mode, which is what it should do when the MFD fails. So we've now got uh, engine instrumentation on the left here, uh, an inset uh, map, as well as all our normal 
attitude indicator, HSI, etc., etc. So that's quite good to know about if you want to practice uh, particular sort of failures. So just press that back in to reinitialize that. OK. Just a couple of uh, extra things to note. Uh, armrests move. Doors will open. Uh, you have to unlatch them first. Close. Have a storm window here. It's a big click spot, so if you use a um, monitor extended, second monitor extended to the left of your main monitor, you might find that that opens uh, by accident when you're working on the second monitor, in which case you will want to you will want to uh, just be careful. There are ways of disabling it uh, or turn off as recommended aircraft stress damage. If I turn the point of view sideways like this, and I'm now using the arrow keys to move down through the compartment, uh, we can see the, I'll just try that again, actually. I'll zoom out a bit first, see if I can get a better view. Uh, yeah, I'm in a bit zoomed in a bit close, but uh, this uh, will allow us to open the rear passenger and cargo door. So remove the latches first, and there's a click spot there in the middle of the placard. And if we zoom down here, a click spot there, and if we come outside, there we go. Now, if we want to close it. Click on the hinge. With this one, the click spot's just above the door there. And now we can latch it. OK. There are, as we noted earlier, lights here. You can control where the airflow goes for the passengers. Another really nice, neat little features like that. That pretty much completes the uh, tour of the cockpit here and the basic layout of it. Obviously, there are a lot of functions and features on the G1000, but I'm not going to attempt to talk about that uh, in this video. So uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, you might want to check out the next one in the series of tutorials. And uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, make sure to check out the first two on how to set the aircraft up and managing payloads. Go ahead, like and subscribe and comment and see you next time.